What's up, y'all? This is Rodney, and I'm back. And I just wanted to give y'all a quick review over the Real Housewives of Atlanta. I'm so happy to be back. My nose is still a little stopped up. Um, I was sick um, for a few days. I was actually okay Sunday night, but I was in my feelings about the whole Gail, uh, the whole Gail um, Snoop Dogg situation. Y'all had me pissed. Y'all had me fucked up. Y'all had me all the way fucked up. I just did not understand how y'all thought it was okay for that man to speak to that woman like that. Like I just don't. I, if a man spoke to your, if a man spoke to you like that, and if your man thought it was okay, baby, you need a new man. You need a new man, sweetie. If somebody told you you was a funky dog head bitch and to back off, you a punk motherfucker before we come and get you, and your man was just like, oh, babe, don't worry about that, bitch. What? A nigga just a nigga who was just charged with murder in 1993 just told me he was gonna come and get me. Girl, let me shut up. I'm done. I made a video about that. Y'all can go watch it. Let's get into this episode. All right. Did y'all see that Nene wasn't on this episode no more? Girl. <laughs> Girl, I hope them kimonos and them uh, V-neck shirts that she be tying in a knot. I hope they selling out of uh, Swag Boutique because she going to need that check when she loses Bravo check. Bravo is not playing with Nene Black ass. Do you hear me? I don't know why y'all thinking that Nene ain't no friend of the house. Like, I don't know why y'all think that Nene job is not in jeopardy. Nene missed another episode, y'all. Another. One of my friends texted me the other day and was like, girl, I think you might be right. Nene missed the episode again. Bitch, what you think? I What you think? What you mean I, you think I might be right? I am right. Nene supposed to be the HBIC, but they won't put that bitch in no episode. And well, from what I heard from what Dr. Heavenly said, they get paid per episode on Married to Madison. So I'm sure it's the same thing for uh, Real Housewives of Atlanta, too. Anyways, girl, Nene, good luck, girl. Because you know you know, your man ain't got no goddamn job. So you might need to fix your attitude, bitch. Because it don't make no sense for you, to, for you to lose this good check. All you got to do is show up and argue with, a, <laughs> argue with a couple of bitches for a couple of hours and take your black ass home. And you can't even do that. You can't even argue with a bitch for $2 million. Now, how, what kind of fucking sense that make? Anyways, child. So, Riley and Kayla. Riley is back in town. Um, she's back home. You know, she was at NYC for an internship. She lets it be known that her and Kayla did not hang out. I do think it's a little bit weird. I'm not going to lie. Do I expect them to hang out all the time? No. Kayla is a grown-ass woman, 23, 24. Riley is still in high school. The only reason why they even know each other is because of marriage. Her father, her mother, they've been married for a few years now. Um, so I can see why they really don't probably have a lot in common and when you think about it Kayla really I don't know Kayla gives me New York tees and Riley is more I drive a Porsche I wear Nicki Minaj's Fendi collection you see what I'm saying like I just don't think they have a lot in common but I do think that it's weird that you have two stepsisters in the same town and especially with Kayla being from New York and Kayla didn't, or Riley didn't get in contact with her or vice versa at least one time. I do think that's weird. That's how, that lets you know that they really don't fuck with each other. Um, and not from, and not from a, oh, I can't stand the bitch, but like, I just don't really got nothing to say to her. Like, we cool. Like, if we around each other, then it's like, hey, girl, but other than that, I'm not going to go out my way to speak to her or to text her to see how she doing, which I think is still kind of fucked up a little bit. Um, oh, girl, girl, we ain't even gonna talk about that. Okay, let, let's go ahead and get into it. All right, all right, here we go. Here we go. Here we go. Here we go. So, what time is it? Okay, I got, I got, I got, I got, I got about 20 minutes. So, Cynthia meets up with Eva for food and for water. Because from what I see, they ain't no one of the bitches drinking. Eva can't, Eva can't drink. I wish she could if she was a trifling ass mama like some of y'all probably was. Let me shut up. I'm judging. Um, she, uh, Eva can't drink. Cynthia says she's not drinking. She's going to see her, see her man in L.A. Tanya comes. You know I like Tanya. I follow Tanya on Instagram. Uh, Kenya shows up and oh God. 
Y'all know Kia is my girl. Y'all know I'm team twirl. But, <clears throat> all right, let's just, let's break this down. I was with Kenya. At first, I was with Kenya. When Kenya was cussing Tanya the fuck out, I was here for it. I ain't see nothing wrong with it. And the reason why I say that is because I, you know, I'm messy. I like to keep up with shit that's going on in real life too outside of the show. I think it gives me, I think I have a better, I think I can have a better perspective of what's going on. So Tanya and Kenya. Tanya and Kenya, prior to season 12, the shooting uh, of season 12, they had already built a friendship. This is what I've been hearing on the after show. This is what Kenya has been saying, that they had already been conversing um, because, you know, um, Kenya was pregnant and she had to go through IVF, I believe. Tanya has one egg. And so that's what they were building their friendship on. So it's not like they were not strangers. When season 12 started, they were not strangers. They had already started to build a relationship talking on the phone. Um, so I can definitely see where Kenya comes from with the whole, like, bitch, you tried to embarrass me. Um, that could have affected my brand. And let's be honest. Um, a lot of people, when she came out and said, T uh, Kenya wears a wig. A lot of people was like, oh, I knew that bitch ain't, I knew that wasn't that bitch real hair. She lying. She ain't got no hair. She bald headed a lot. Now, Kenya, girl, you wear wigs in pieces sometimes. It is what it is. You had on a wig at that table and that's just what it is. I think when you tried to pull that I don't wear wigs, she made a comment about her not wearing wigs. She reminded me of Mariah off Marriage Mass Medicine when Mariah said we we were not talking about quad and it's like girl yes y'all were you Pond and Trap House Lucy shout out to Erica y'all was sitting at that table at whatever religion day that religious day that was y'all sitting at that table talking about quad regardless if y'all sat there for three hours and y'all only talk about quad for five minutes you still talked about her we have it on camera so that's what king that's who kenya reminded me of when she tried to pull the pull the you know i don't wear wig you do wear wigs you just but you have long healthy you know a head full of hair at the same time um I think that Tanya, I think a lot of people give Tanya a pass because Tanya is this, you know, nerdy, um, high energy type of girl. So it's like, oh, Tanya wouldn't hurt a soul. But Tanya is also a liar. And I'm going to tell you why I think Tanya is a liar. Tanya is a liar for the simple fact that she tried to say that, te that Kenya, Kenya attacked her. Or she tried to pull that, oh, Kenya, I feel attacked or you attacked me. Tanya said in the after show that I saw a clip from the after show that Kenya had made a fucked up comment about her having a one about one egg. Tanya, you're not going to get me to believe that y'all have had this conversation in front of the cameras. She said that I think she said that Kenya said that when they were in Toronto. You mean to tell me that you had a conversation with Kenya Moore? And she said something so disgusting and so vile about you having one egg. And Bravo did not catch it. Bitch, one thing I'm not going to put past Bravo is when them motherfucking cameras are rolling, they catching everything. Do you hear me? They going to catch everything. So, Tanya, I think that you are a bold-faced lie when you say that Kenya attacked you or she tried to disrespect you about you having one egg. I don't believe it. She said something like that on the after show. Um, however, with that being said, I think that Kenya, when Kenya was cussing Tanya out, I was here for it. I ain't seen nothing wrong with it. However, I think that she took it a little too far for me when she brought that cookie lady in. Girl. Bitch, when I saw that cookie lady walking that though, I said, girl, no, this bitch did. Baby, Tanya is a better bitch than I could ever be. Because the way I would have flipped that table over. 
the way I would have tried to monkey stalk Kenya and the cookie lady and Cynthia just because, bitch, I don't know if you got something to do with this, but I'm going to say you got something to do with it. And if I and if you don't, then, girl, I'm sorry. But, bitch, you getting a piece of this ass whooping, too. Do you hear me? I thought that that was just over the line. You know, I have defend y'all know I would defend Kenya in a heartbeat. I don't think that Kenya did anything wrong when it came to Cynthia and Mike's engagement. I don't think she was out of line. I don't think she was out of pocket. I don't think she was out of line nor out of pocket when she brought up that what if question at the table about what if your man was cheating. I do think she was out of pocket when she decided to go get the alleged side bitch to bring her to have a discussion with Tanya. Girl, that ain't got nothing to do with you, girl nothing. I think that Kenya was well within her rights to cuss Tanya the fuck out when she did. She had every right to. Because girl, you supposed to be my home. Well, you supposed to be we're building this friendship and girl, you trying to publicly embarrass me. I know a lot of people going to say, well girl, she was at the table telling Tanya business. She ain't told Tanya business. Girl, Bravo told Tanya business when they showed that clip of that cookie lady walking up to them telling that Paul was a cheating ass nigga. I don't know if he is. We'll get into that in a little bit. Um, but I think that Kenya was out of line, out of order when she did that. Baby, I said, baby, Tanya, Tanya is the woman I need to be because I don't know how I would have handled that situation. Yes, I do. Yes, I do. I probably wouldn't have fought. I probably wouldn't have fought. But I damn sure would have, baby, I would have reached so far deep down in my soul. And when I tell you, I would have been saying all types of cuss words. And then the thing that really bothered me the most about the cookie lady is when she tried to check Tanya. Bitch, have you lost your motherfucking mind? Let me just say something, because a lot of y'all are some liars. I saw a lot of y'all. She not even that cute. She not even cute. Girl, let me tell y'all something. That is a bold-faced lie. In my opinion, I think the girl is drop-dead gorgeous. That girl walked right in there. We ha let me say something. I think that sometimes people... When you are comparing the Porsches and, you know... Even the Kenyas and the Tanyas and the Cynthias, they are not ugly women. They're very attractive. But I also know that that girl probably had on little to no makeup. All right? And the girl is gorgeous. So all I'm saying is if she go get her hair curled, if she go get one of the local punks out of ATL to double dutch on her face, I'm sure she will fit right in beside Portia, right beside Kenya. The girl is bad. I know y'all mad at her because y'all feel like she's a home wrecking hoe. But that don't have nothing to do. You cannot take away from the fact that that girl is drop dead fucking gorgeous. Okay? And ain't got nothing to do with her being light skinned. And, and she's just a light skinned bad bitch. Period. Okay? The girl is bad. Now her attitude is, her attitude is fucked up. Now, that's what's fucked up. What time is it? Her attitude is fucked up. Okay, I don't understand what she thought. She, like, I just don't think it was a good look for her, period. Like, girl, you coming on here. Like, girl, we don't even know your name first of all. Girl, I'm, we still calling you the cookie lady. Um, You coming on here and um, to do what? I don't know. Um, I thought it was distasteful. I thought that an ass whooping should have happened. I the, Tanya handled herself really well because that couldn't have been me. Good baby. King, you was out of order. And you damn sure out of order, especially when we look at what's going on with you and your man. Y'all know I'm team twirl, but girl, I got to say it for what it is, bitch. Um, the cookie lady, is she lying about Paul? I don't think she lying, and I'ma tell you why. On the after show, Tanya made a comment and she said, Paul said that he didn't even know her like that. Girl, what? What you mean? He said he don't know her like that. He shouldn't know the bitch at all. All right? That, and that's period. Just because I stop at your cookie st show and, so and buy some cookies, if somebody said, Paul, do you know that lady? I don't know that lady. Have you met her before? I mean, I saw her. I think she worked at the cookie shop, but I don't know her. Now, I don't know her like that. No, I don't know that bitch, okay? We did a business transaction. I bought some cookies. And she took my money and I took my black ass home. That's what happened. I don't know her at all. 
So all I'm saying is Tanya. It may be a little, a little bit, a little bit, a little bit of truth. I don't think the girl is lying. I'm just gonna say I think she's telling the truth. I think Paul tried to get with her. I think that Paul told her he worked in real estate because he thought he was gonna be smart about it. Who the fuck gonna say they? Uh, yeah, I work in technology. No, I work in real estate. So now people are like, he don't even work. He, she said he worked in real estate because that's probably what he told her. And that's probably what he told her. I don't think she lying. I think that she looks dumb, though. I think it's like, girl, what are you going to get out of this? Like, this is what people need to realize. Even if you are telling the truth, people are never going to have sympathy for the girl who looks like the home wrecking hoe. You see what I'm saying? Even though you ain't wrecked shit, even though Paul was probably the one who walked up to you and tried to get your number and all that stuff. For some reason, people are never going to blame him. People are going to say, why the fuck you coming on the show and trying to ruin this family? No, why is Paul taking other bitches numbers? And that's cheating to me. You ain't got no business taking nobody's number. What the fuck you need her number for? Anyways, that's just me. Um... <laughs> Girl, I don't even want to talk about Portia and Dennis, girl. Um, bitch, when I put bitch, Mark fine as hell, but go back to Brooklyn. <laughs> bitch, 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 when Mark had on those shorts and that t-shirt, I said, God damn. <laughs> bitch, Mark. <laughs> <laughs> bitch, I, bitch, that Mark, bitch. Bitch, that bitch, I gotta take a time. <sighs> Bitch, that mark is fine. I don't give a fuck what none of y'all say. Bitch, that mark is fine as fuck. But baby, that could not be my man. Can you divorce that? Damn, my iPad just died. I gotta hurry up because I that's how I be keeping up with time. Um, can you divorce that man? Divorce that man. Um, I wonder what y'all do when y'all have babies who look just like they baby. When I tell you that baby looks just like Mark, just like Mark. Damn. Anyways, um, Mark in Kenya, I thought it was cute when they were walking up to the building and he reached out and he grabbed her hand and they held hands. I thought it was cute when he tapped her on her butt. Um, clearly, they are not meant for each other. I think that's clear as day. Um, I think that one thing I'm going to say is this. I hate when y'all... One thing I, I'm like, I'm hoping Ken, Kenya has to be somewhat of a strong person because the way that y'all go in on that girl, like, I think is unnecessary. Like, when y'all like, her man can't even fucking stand her. I hope her man get her together. Why are y'all hoping that... Why are y'all glad or hoping that a husband checks a wife? Like, and then, like, the way y'all say it, it's not even like, oh, she deserved to be checked for, some, for X, Y, and Z. It's like y'all are finding pleasure and the fact that Kenya may be going through stuff with her man. She disrespected everybody else, man. She did. I can all remember her disrespecting her about the marriage. I know y'all gonna say, well, when, when she was playing with Apollo, oh, girl, Apollo a two-time convicted felon. Y'all <laughs> see reaching, girl. Who y'all be reaching? Apollo who, Apollo who was fucking Phaedra on an air mattress in a trap house. With an ankle bracelet around his ankle. That Apollo? Apollo, the one who was stealing folks' money with his ex-wife. That Apollo? Yeah. Y'all really think... Y'all... Okay, girl, anyways. I'm, I'm done with Kenya and Mark. Um, Kenya, it, the, the scene wasn't as cringeworthy as I thought that it was going to be, um, I, like I said, I'm going to be honest and say that I don't think that they should be together. I think they should get a divorce. Just like I don't think that Portia and, uh, you know, I had a full conversation at work the other day and I had to let, and it was me against like five people. And I had to, I said, you know what's so weird to me is that, I know I'm getting off subject. I'm going to get back on subject. I said what's so weird to me is that y'all really think when you look at the, when you look, Kenya got a different man every season. Bitch, Portia done had a different man every season. When you really look at Kenya and Portia's situation, they really are the same. It's really the same situation. 
Kenya had a different, for some reason, Kenya had a different man every season. That means she paying these men. Portia had a different man every season. And quiet as it's kept, if you really want to be honest about it, I think that Todd guy was a full-fledged punk. That boy gave me everything gay. Well, I remember when Phaedra walked in that room and he high-fived to, hey, girl. I said, oh, okay, sis. Portia had a different man every season. Kenyon had a different man every season. Portia man ain't shit. Mark ain't shit. They both met a man and had babies by them too early. Girl, they situate, when you really start to look at their situations, they really are the same. Girl, you really think that Kenya Moore, like I said, you really think that Kenya Moore, one of the baddest bitches in the world, Went and got a nigga with a receding hairline to pay him to be on the show. She, if, if I'm going to pay anybody, I'm going to go get a fine nigga. I'm not going to go get a nigga who hairline store back here. Anyways, child, let me get off that shit. That shit is old. Um, Let's talk about uh, Cynthia and Mike. Cynthia and Mike. Baby, y'all. <laughs> Cynthia and Mike. All right, listen. <clears throat> Y'all gonna have to get me to understand how is it that Mike works in a male-dominated field and there's just no way that he can find men that he can be friends with. I don't think there's wrong, there's anything wrong with men and women being friends. I'm gonna be honest, a part of me, I don't trust it sometimes. I absolutely see why some women are like, why are you friends with women? Some men, why are you friends with men? Like sometimes I do believe that opposite sex, uh, op the opposite sex cannot be friends. I've heard stories, seen things where, oh, we slipped up and fucked. How you slip up and fuck your home girl or your home boy if y'all really friends? The people that are my friends, I ain't never had sex with. Okay, my good Judy's, I ain't never fucked them because we, because we sussed. We sus, okay? That's my sus. You know what I'm saying? I don't even look at my sisters like that. You see what I'm saying? So, I just think it's weird that Mike has all of these female friends. And I don't give a fuck if half of them are lesbians because, bitch, you quiet as just kept these lesbians in 2020. Girl, they really bisexual because they sitting on dicks and doing full splits too. Um... I just think it's weird that Mike has all of these female friends and he does not have any male friends. That is weird to me, especially being that Mike works in a male dominated field. Like he works in sports. You can't find no men that are just, are, did he say, I think, did he say, oh, you know what? Did he say, because I'm trying to remember, did he say the reason why he can't be friends with men is because the men are trifling and they and they take him to a spot. Like I guess I guess because he's changing his ways that he can't hang around those men because they all trifling. Did he say something like that? I'm hoping that's what he said, because that's the only thing that I would find acceptable to the point where you don't have a lot of male friends. And even with that being said, I think that there's a such thing as self-control. I think that sometimes, um, even though I think that uh, your friends can very well influence you, even grown-ass people. I think that sometimes we have to um, be honest and take um, responsibility of our own actions. And if your friends ain't got nothing to do with you cheating on your wives or your girlfriends, you did it because you wanted to. Now, when I was looking at that, that scene, I sat there and I looked and I put, let me tell you what I put. Oh, no, it was about Mama Joyce. Um, why is that little girl, why was that little girl in the kitchen? The whole time I was thinking, why is this little girl in the kitchen? There is a such thing as grown conversation. And I think that that was one of those moments. <coughs> I think those was one of those, I think that was one of those moments. Where Mike should have told his daughter, even if she is in college, hey baby, take your plate upstairs. I'll come on, I'll come up there and check on you in a little bit. Or hey baby, you wanna you wanna go to your friend's house? I got some friends coming over. Oh, whatever the case may be, you know what I'm saying? You ain't gotta kick her out because your friend's coming over. But y'all get what I'm trying to say. That girl had no business being in that kitchen. 
um, at all. And so now her feelings are hurt because she basically just found out her daddy wasn't shit, okay? Basically, I just found out in front of the whole goddamn world that my daddy was an ain't shit nigga who cheated on my mama and he didn't even love her. And it's a possibility he might cheat on Cynthia. Now, Cynthia, it ain't nothing that you can say um, when she says... Um, Oh, I did put, I put why is his daughter there in grown folks conversation. I did put that. When Cynthia said, what makes me different? It ain't got nothing to do with you. What makes him different? That's the question you need to be asking. Not what makes me different than his ex-wives. Because his ex-wives didn't do nothing wrong. That nigga cheated on his ex-wives. Period. What makes him different? What makes you different now with me than when you were with your two ex-wives? What work have you done that will let me know that you changed, that your behavior has changed. Because I'm not no different. But how are you different? How are you different from yesterday, nigga? That's what I need to know. Um, but yeah, that whole friends with all those goddamn girls, mm -hmm. I'm gonna be, um, mm -hmm. Now, uh, one of them I thought was a lesbian, the one who was like, what a bad, what a bad bitch is that or something like that. Even with her own trust it, okay? I don't know, y'all. Y'all let me know how y'all feel about that. Is it okay for Mike to have all of those female friends and not any male friends? I mean, the truth of the matter is, this is how I, I do feel this way, too. I don't think that you can come into someone's life and start trying to dictate who they can and cannot be friends with. I think once you realize that this person is friends with this person, it's kind of up to you at that moment to say, you know what, girl, either I'm going to deal with it or I'm not. You can't come and tell somebody, oh, because if I've been knowing these girls for five and ten years, I'm not about to get rid of my friends because you feel as though some shit going on. If I tell you I ain't never fucked a bitch, I ain't never fucked a bitch. But it just looked weird to me. Candy and Todd, I'm going to be honest, y'all. Candy, she do too much talking. She ain't got to tell her husband everything. Truth be told, if you really want to be honest about it, the only reason why Mama Joyce even fooled with Todd is because she still feel bad for the way she acted when Miss Sharon was alive. If Miss Sharon was still alive, Mama Joyce would still be acting like an old bitch. And that's just what it comes down to. Mama Joyce don't like Todd. She put on a good face. She's trying to cover it up because she felt bad and she don't want no shit and she feel bad because that boy mama has passed away. With that being said, Candy, you don't need to tell Todd everything. I'm sure it's known, it's, a, it's not a secret that they don't like each other, right? It's not a secret. Now, with that being said, I wouldn't trust Todd either. I'm sure that Candy has... Whenever she did her will or prenup that she had shit carved out for Riley and now since she has a new baby, I'm sure she has all that stuff situated. Candy ain't no goddamn fool in love. You see, before she even married Ty, she was like, nigga, if you don't sign this prenup, it ain't gonna be no marriage. So we know Candy ain't that goddamn foolish, right? With that being said, I see how Ty treat his own goddamn daughter, okay? So I don't put nothing past Ty. Todd want to live off candy money, but he won't let Kayla live off candy money. Todd gives me stepmama tease. And what I mean by stepmama tease is, remember on Cinderella, when Cinderella daddy died, then all of a sudden, girl, now she in the house with these two, with her two, with her two stepsisters and her stepmama, and they pretty much made her the maid. That's what Todd gives me. Todd gives me, if candy pass away tomorrow, girl, <laughs> Riley gonna be the man. <laughs> Riley gonna be the man. Riley gonna, Riley gonna be the man, and Ace and Blaze gonna be all right. Cause those are the ones who those are his real children, right? I'm just saying. Todd, Todd just looks, Todd looks iffy to me. I don't blame Mama Joyce at all. I don't. Just look at how he treats Kayla. That man went a whole 30 days without talking to his daughter and they were under the same roof. His biological daughter. What did she do that that was that serious to the point where you would stop talking to your daughter for 30 days? I'm just saying. So, to a certain degree, I'm team Mama Joyce. I don't blame her. I would not trust Todd either. I think Todd is sneaky. I think it's wrong that Todd wants to live off of Candy's dollar, but Kayla can't. All right, y'all, I got to get ready for work. All right, I'll talk to y'all later. Bye.